Jamie here, Jamie here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. October 25th, 2024, 30 on this fine Friday. Talk really quick about the market, some names I'm looking at, and go from there. SP futures are in the green overnight. Asian markets were mixed. Europe markets were in the red. We'll see if they bounce today. Uh, so interesting weeks. Dow's down over 2%. McDonald's obviously being a lot of that. Uh, SP is in the red. NASDAQ's down about a half percent. So it looks like the SP is going to end its six week winning streak and then we head into the weekend and big big week coming up next week and then the week after next week we have five of the seven magnificent seven stocks meta google amazon microsoft and who am i forgetting microsoft amazon google apple uh and then the following week is obviously the election and the fed meeting so we have a uh, a firestorm of market catalysts uh, over the next two weeks. But if there's any good sign, I mean, take a look at Tesla. So um, it missed on revenues, but great margins and a surprise. And I was mentioning on the rants this week that it, it almost, like you look at it, it sold off because of robo taxi, which how much of the robo taxi was really baked into the stock to begin with. So I thought it would bounce anyway, but of course, if I was that convicted, I would have got the calls. Uh, so anyway, take a look at a spy. Uh, five five seventy eight, which we were five seventy seven ninety nine coming into Thursday. Nice little bounce, close at five seventy nine twenty four. Tight range yesterday, so five seventy eight resist uh, support, five eighty five resistance, and then maybe some chop into next week today. Uh, good signs, the VIX back under nineteen, and then yields actually declined for the first time uh, in a couple sessions. So we'd like to see that trend continue. There's always seems like every morning uh, uh, there's a new uh, piece or article written about why yields are the ten year remains over four percent and continues to rally. And today it's uh, because of a sweep by uh, the Republicans, right? I mean, market likes certainty, so uh, doesn't like uncertainty. So uh, either side wins the, the presidential race. Uh, that doesn't matter as much as if they have all three houses, right? If they have all three. Uh, the, the Senate, the Congress, and the president, if they're all one side, then it's going to allow for a lot of the policies that uh, one side wants to, to win, right? So that's typically, I would not be, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's not a good, you know, of course, if you're one side or the other, you want your whole side to get all the policies that you you want, right? Uh, but when you have a, when it's split, it leaves, it's harder to pass bills and things, which causes a quagmire and you know, you know we have the, the u.s debt limit that's always having issues and getting things passed can be a struggle but at least it opens things up to debate and it's it's not just going to allow a just easy passing of all these bills so some are saying the reason yields are going to go up because if it's a sweep by one side we're going to see you know higher spending you know, larger deficits things like that I, I don't know everybody's coming out with all these narratives to to rationalize it i just hope it starts to come down soon uh because the, the higher it goes, the, the worse it's going to be for, uh, eventually it's going to take a tick on the markets. All right, so that's overall market. Um, also, the IWM finally ended its five-session winning streak, but only up to two-tenths of a percent. Uh, let's see if it can outperform today. It would be nice. All right, so now individual names. Are, and first, I just, I'll finish, I'll start with Travel Zoo. It was up 3% yesterday, but my, my calls took it on the chin. Implied volatility went down. But I, I'm going to try and spend some time, and I keep saying about finite, time is a finite resource, right? So I try to, uh, I want to try and get some implied moves for next week on some of the bit magnificent sevens. If you take a look, Tesla exceeded its implied moves, so I want to spend some time on that. But I also want to try and put a quick piece together on, on TravelZoo, because the more I look at it, the more I'm like, this is an opportunity here. Uh, so I already mentioned it. Uh, so if you take a look at their, uh, uh, what they've done over the last couple of quarters, since the start, let's see if I can find it here. Um, sorry, sorry, quarter three. Yeah, so last quarter they bought 552,000 shares back, right? The quarter before they bought, let's see, come on, come on. All right, it's right here. Uh, quarter before that they bought 800 shares. So that's 1.3 million over two quarters. The quarter before that they bought 400,000 shares. So that's, you know, uh, over 2 million. And then, um, the quarter before that, they bought back 1 million shares. So I have to do the math. So that was third quarter of 2023, they, they bought 1 million shares. So that was when they started doing the buybacks. They just authorized another million share buyback. So you start looking, I'm like, this could be one of those, they buy up their outstanding share count. So I'm, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that certainly bodes well because they're, they're it's like they're struggling to find uses for their cash, which they've done it on marketing spend and things like that. But then I, I talk about their meta and their freemium model. So they have 30 million 
uh, freemium members and they're gonna roll out their meta and they've already rolled it out but supposedly they have like 1 million is going to be their founding members which i guess is going to cost 20 dollars on an annual basis so that's to kind of get the ball rolling and then it's gonna be 40 dollars after that so even if they get 1 million folks and if the founding member price i don't know how that's all going to work but if it's just you know 1 million people sign up at start of year that's three percent of their member base their freemium member base which is insubstantial not substantial whatsoever and right away that would be 20 million in revenue and then every other million after is 40 million dollars in recurring revenue uh, on a yearly basis they do 80 million dollars a year in revenue so <laughs> right off the bat you're talking 25 percent revenue growth just from that and uh, you know if it's if it substantially beats their uh, you know if, if they're able to to convert two percent i mean four or five six percent you're talking i mean doubling revenues and you take a look at the stock and the outstanding and their fundamentals anyway so i'll try and do a little piece i got to do figure out more of their business they're they've had some declines in the u.s side europe's doing well uh, I, one time a couple of years ago they closed their china side uh, japan side so i anyway, really like this one unfortunately the premiums came out of it but i'll look possibly to get some january strikes because i think this one heads higher 1750 20 bucks in the coming weeks uh, VKTX. So it was just yesterday morning. I was talking about VKTX's earnings. Seemed like a somewhat non-event. Of course, you'll have headlines. Oh, VKTX beats earnings, but earnings don't matter on a company that's still early stage, right? But the uh, CEO kind of made some comments around their uh, oral data, which they were looking to to tar to to see how uh, dosing, right? So that the big part of uh, what we've seen in weight loss is a lot of these companies. When they, when they have data, they'll have a cohort of whatever, 200 people, and then they'll have the dis different dosages. And a lot of times, as they go up to dosage levels, obviously, mo most times, folks experience better weight loss, but there's a lot more adverse effects, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, all that fun stuff. Uh, but with VKTX, they've had best in class in regards to adverse effects, so they've been able to figure out dosing, right? Um, and the fact that you don't have to go get a shot and things like that, I mean, if they're able to, to solve this, with adverse effects and have an oral solution. I mean, this data could be, you know, the tipping tipping point. But uh, by the <laughs> by the rumor, sell the news. So when the CEO said they can't announce a data, give an update until obesity week, some construe that as it's going to be blockbuster news. So you saw it run up in the morning, and then it kept going. And you watch VKTX long enough, you say, wow. Typically, it fades these these runs, and it didn't. So I went and got some strikes into next week just because I wasn't uh, I didn't want to go get the November 15th just yet because the premiums uh, spiked into the 70, 71, all, almost up to 75, closed uh, 73.22. I'll, I'll probably hold the last of the November strikes into next week pending any, uh, if I'm able to get them out for 300, 400% some more, I, I'll do that. And then I'll start looking just, I just want a couple November 15th. I might go into the hundreds just in case there's some crazy surprise whether it be m a or the data is substantially better than expectations um just don't want to be you know follow it so long just want to make sure i have some skin in the game so that's the plan of vktx you look at the long-term chart it closed at its high highest level since may 16th which you know just kind of speaks volumes to how frustrating the stock has been considering it was over 100 bucks back back in march and april all right so that's vktx when so las vegas sands closed up nearly three percent on on somewhat mixed earnings but a two billion dollar stock buyback authorization i thought win would rally more than las vegas stands it didn't close flat up up two tenths of a percent still have somewhat of a bull flag setting up here they're going to announce the earnings date it could be today it could be monday uh and then the earnings will be usually a couple days after so they'll probably report next wednesday don't be surprised if i add some strikes uh, into next week if it's over 100 bucks today uh otherwise i'll wait till next week that's when uh, roku again reports october 30th the flat session yesterday it's actually up a little bit here in the pre-market uh i the plan would be to add some inexpensive calls hope for get some premium build if i don't get the premium build i'll close them out completely into earnings if i get some premium build i'll lock some in to cover costs and ride the rest uh regeneron i i just put this on here i, I was looking at it when it was a thousand bucks so that was a couple weeks ago and just look at i mean it's down one two three four five six seven eight of the past nine sessions and you, you look back in september it was 1150 and some of this has to do with amgen so their eye prod their eye drug which is kind of the claim to fame for regeneron how they were i guess put on the map uh that that drug looks like amgen's coming out with a similar solution and uh regeneron does like five billion dollars in revenues with that product and that's uh, $5 billion of their $11 billion they do on a yearly basis. 
So you see Regeneron selling off, and then the judge came in and said, uh, you know, Amgen's allowed to sell this drug, and Regeneron says, oh, well, we're still not done trying to fight this, so who knows what that resolves to. But I think there's an opportunity. Even if they don't, I think it'll bounce. For, you look at the chart, it's the craziest pincher that I've seen in, in a bit, and look how tight the, the pinch is. And I'll try and circle it for folks who don't know with an updated chart. But this could be a name that maybe it squeezes 25, 30 bucks in a matter of two days or even more. So don't be surprised if I had some spec calls on there. Uh, then on the flip side, so Broadcom and MDB put hedges this week and Broadcom dropped right at the open yesterday, down to 169.50. My puts were up 100%. I tried to lock some in and then it bounced. I held them and then it chopped around at 171 for the rest of the day. Probably should have sold them right when I got the chance. Uh, same with uh, MDB. I had, they were up 100% at one point on uh Wednesday, didn't close them out. Uh, what are you going to do? So uh, they provided, uh, I guess, stress relief holdings overnight, just in case there was some crazy move. I'll continue to use that support resistance on the spy and have a plan. You got to have a plan, otherwise you get caught with your pants down. Uh, last but not least, here with Redfin and, and SE, uh, Redfin ten bucks, still holding here. I'm not going to add anything. I mean, I, st I got the November's uh, last Friday. I'll probably just sit on my hands. One of these days, I just hope it holds 10 here today, and then maybe it could start bouncing next week. And then SC, similar, I mean, it's not as tight as Regeneron and the tight Bollinger Band, but close over 100, solid sign here, hasn't done that in a, in a week and a half, and it's over 101 here in the pre-market, which if it opens here, it's multi-year highs. So don't be surprised if I add some strikes into November. I think they're going to report the first, or, uh, the second or third week of November, so I'll try to get some calls to encompass that. And that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. I'll be back on audio later. Rock and roll.